Hi, I'm here with Faye Brooks, who the nation know and love as Kate Connor from Coronation Street, for which she actually won um, an NTA for Best Newcomer as well. But Faye is also very much at home in musical theatre, having performed in Shrek, Legally Blonde, Greece, and more recently in Manchester in Chicago. Chicago. They was also a finalist in Dancing on Ice and she is now passadobly in her way back to Manchester to perform in Strictly Ballroom at the Larry from the 26th of June to the 1st of July. So thank you very much for joining us Faye, we're very excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and we want to know all about um, Strictly Ballroom. Now, obviously, we've got loads of people out there who will know every word to this um, from the film. They'll know every dance move. They'll know every song. But there's also going to be a whole new generation of newbies as well. So can you tell us what it's all about? Yes. I mean, if you do know the film, you have to know that what's so wonderful about this production is it's so true to the film. So Craig Revel Horwood and Jason Gilkerson have created the live version of the film. And I feel so lucky that I get to play Fran. But for those of you who haven't necessarily been brought up with the film like I was, and you're brand new to the Strictly Ballroom, it's brilliant and bonkers. And <laughs> it's a story set in Australia. So there are many, many Australian accents in this show. And um, from the beginning, we meet Scott who is a professional um, champion who is basically been brought up in a world of dance. And it's very strict, it's very regimented. And if you are, are a dancer, you'll know that it's, um, it's a very disciplined world. And as much as Scott is very good at what he does, he wants to break the mold. He wants to do something different and probably make a mark for himself. So he experiments with moves and there's another woman that is very much interested in that form of dance and her name is Fran. But Fran is very quiet and reserved and people don't know that what she's capable of. And I play the role of Fran, who is basically the ugly duckling that turns into the swan. That's how I describe her. And um, you see her go on this huge journey of self-discovery. And I love roles like that because I'm constantly learning about myself as just as a human, as a woman, as a person in this industry. And I, I really um, resonate with Fran. And uh, there may be a love story involved. Mm -hmm. You'll just have to come along to the Lowry and, and watch Scott and Fran's stories and, um, and see what comes out of this brilliant Baz Luhrmann, bonkers and brilliant performance. Absolutely. And she's a very, like you've touched on and what Fran's like there. She's very, I think we should all actually learn a little from her sheer will and determination that she has as well, right? She's yeah, for sure. She's got the passion. And I think that it sees her through to the Paso Doble. Um, but you don't know about that passion. You don't know all the layers there are to her. And we meet Scott straight away at the beginning of the show and you know exactly what you're getting with Scott. And he's a brilliant leading man and we have Kevin Clifton leading the way for us and he does it so well. He's the best Scott Hastings there is. I will always sing his praises. He pushes me and I think I push him, excuse me. <clears throat> and together we kind of tell two different stories that are parallel to one another, but we're on two different journeys. And um, it's about myself playing Fran coming from a very um, Spanish background because we forget that's her heritage. And Scott coming from a very um, strict dancers championship, you know, um, it's ruled his life. And it's very true to Kevin's life as well because he's <laughs> from that world too. I met Kevin's parents and I was like, oh my God, you're Shirley and Doug. Like <laughs> he's literally from that world. And so our worlds are kind of parallel, but if anything, we complement one another and hopefully you will see a, a beautiful story unfolding. And Fran would absolutely love the cast and creatives behind this, wouldn't she? Because it is just it's dance legends like you've got you've already mentioned you've got Craig Rebel Harwood you've got Jason Gilkinson you've got Kevin Clifton um and you, you've you've mentioned already that obviously that Kevin helps you what has it been like working with all these um Strictly Come Dancing legends as well who who were very much involved in that world yeah I was definitely out my depth like people think I've just 
I don't know, taken to this like a Dr. Water and I haven't. I spent hours rehearsing and to the point where, you know, I would be in my kitchen at home practicing the flamenco steps, which I'd never come across in my life. I've only really trained in jazz, ballet and tap because that was a part of my training at drama school. But to to really go beyond that small world of dance, it's a huge circumference of of technique and skill. And I really have been put through my paces. And I think that they um, did it very generously with me. They, they were giving me kind of um, lovely tips and advice along the way, but made it a very safe environment for me to fail and and learn and grow and evolve. And now it gets to the point where, you know, I have Kevin telling me after one show, that's the best you've ever done the Paso or, oh my God, the way you just did the rumba is exactly how I imagined that we, that Fran and Scott would do, you know, there's little nuances that are coming from my performance now. And I've been doing the show since March. So I think it is a show that keeps on giving. And I think that's the beauty of dance is that it's always evolving and you're always either challenging yourself or, something comes from that one performance or that one audience that gives you something to take away or to, to learn from. And I'm, I'm learning with my job every day. And I, I love that. And how was it with the Australian accent as well? Were you kind of... Oh, that's a- just fun. That's the fun of my like job. Like, I love doing the, I love doing accents. Like, people yeah. have to know that about me. I've <laughs> always been doing accents since the moment I could speak, whether it be a Russian accent, an American accent, a, a, an Australian accent. I have family in Australia, um, an Irish accent, uh, you know, Essex, um, uh, God, Scottish, you name it. I love playing with it. That's my, my job. But that's the joy of my job. And I think that um, that's another string to my bow that I've always made sure that I should always kind of just keep that in my back pocket for a rainy day just in case you need it for a job who knew that I would be playing an Australian woman you know (laughs) who's Spanish um set in Australia um in a UK tour who knows what your job is going to bring you and I'm just so grateful that I've been given the opportunity because I do have that skill set and and I now get to use it brilliant brilliant yeah I was just I I was thinking if it was me I'd be like kind of like use it as an excuse to watch reruns of Neighbours or something but uh, good job I worked with Jason Donovan because that really helped yes and I I hope he didn't think that I was making fun of him every time I did the Australian (laughs) accent with him but I wasn't I generally love it it's it's a great accent to play with and I love the sound of it It's, it's awesome yeah, it is. It is. As are the songs in this show. So um, I believe that there's a mixture of um, songs from the soundtrack from the film mixed in with brand new original songs. Is that right? Yes, correct. So a lot of the audience, especially if you know the film, they'll probably start singing along with Cindy Lauper's <laughs> classics. But there are new songs that have been written for the show. Um, a beautiful ballad that I, there's actually sung in three different uh, places in the show. And it's myself who gets to sing that song um, repeatedly. And that's uh, David Foster, who's just a sensational songwriter. We have songs in there by Sia. We have songs in there that you'll you'll definitely know. Love, in, love is in the air, perhaps, 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 but in Spanish. There, I don't want to give it all away, but it's a non-stop jam-packed soundtrack that you will either know, you won't know, or you'll fall in love with. Yes. Oh, it sounds exciting. And we cannot kind of do this interview without talking about the Paso because um, I've heard, I want to know. So obviously um, Fran's dad kind of shows the young ones how it's done. And then obviously Scott and Fran do get together and and do the big Paso. Obviously, I'm not asking you to give too much away, but is it as spine tingling as I've heard it is going to be? Um, It's probably the moment I work my whole show up to. So there is a lot of pressure to make sure that the patho is the patho. And if you've ever watched Strictly Come Dancing, you'll know whenever anyone, any celebrity and any pro that gets to dance that, <clears throat> it's a show-stopping moment. And I get to do that eight shows a week with Kevin. And it's just, it's everything. And it comes in two parts too. So you not only do you get like the show-stopping moment where Fran is revealed and Scott and Fran eventually get to dance it, but then we dance an, another feature of the Paso, which is kind of like our own mashup. Okay. 
And so it's like um it's like the cherry on top of the cake, basically. Yeah. So stay tuned. That's all I'll say. Stay tuned. Exciting. Um, and finally, is it going to be like just oh, coming home? Is it always a little bit more special when you play to a Manchester audience? Um, or is it just part of the job? No, it honestly, it's it's kind of like re- it's really emotional coming home. It's really hard on tour. And um I think just coming back to Manchester, which is the place where it's familiar and I'm known and I'm kind of given this big warm hug of just like your back and remember that we love you and you just you sometimes you need a bit of that reminding um because you are away from loved ones and Manchester does hold a special place in my heart especially I mean Coronation Street's literally over the water (laughs) I know that all of the Corrie lot are coming it's going to mean even more to me that they're watching me because they've never watched me do a live performance. They've never heard me sing. So even that is rewarding in itself. So I'm I'm counting down the days. I get to be at home with my mom. I get to just have a little bit of normality, if that makes sense. It does, yeah. Because, I mean, right now I'm in a hotel room and I haven't spoken to anybody all day. That's yeah. normal, um, apart from yourself. And I will <laughs> literally take myself to work And I will give an audience like the most, you know, brilliant performance because I want to give 100% every night. But there's something special about coming home and and your family watching you because it's it's kind of why you remember why you're doing it. Yeah. And I and I have to say that um, we I saw you in Chicago in Manchester. So I just want you to know from an audience fan viewpoint that what you do just it lights up the theatre. It you yeah. genuinely light up the theatre um, and leave us all smiling. So keep doing what you're doing because you okay. are brilliant, Faye. Honestly, thank you so so much. Oh bless you, thank you. That means everything. <laughs> Honestly, Lovely talking with you. Yeah, we can't wait to welcome you back home. Catch Faye at the Lowry in Strictly Ballroom from the 26th of June to the 1st of July. It is going to be spectacular. Thank you and all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye, lovely. Strictly Ballroom the Musical, the dazzling live sensation from Baz Luhrmann and directed by me, Craig Rebel Horwood. See Strictly Come Dancing legend Kevin Clifton in this spectacular dance musical that promises to be fabulous. Don't miss out. Book now.